Welcome to the Pile of Salt podcast. My name is Hank. With me, we're going to talk about stuff. It's Ben. Yo. I'm hoping there's not phone noises in the background. (laughs) There's only so much you can do. I was on the balcony and I'm still like, damn, popping off out there. (laughs) <laughs> to be fair, the win- like the window, I I think it's uh, more of a problem. Of, like the there's not a not a perfect seal on things. Anyway, we're talking about a lot of shit. Yeah, we're just um, gonna c- catch up with some stuff that we've been doing that was not for the podcast or whatever. I I think for for me, I would like to pop off on my four very quick things. Sure. If pop. I, if I pop may. off, son. All right. Um, I played four video. I mean, I played a lot of video games. I played four in particular. Two, uh, two of them to completion, and two of them are in progress. Uh, I played Fishing Vacation. It's a little Game Boy style horror game. Uh, sorry, wait. It's not a horror game. You go fishing and nothing happens. It, it's a very. Cool. <laughs> horror line that's like the tag <laughs> like you go on a normal fishing adventure with your buddy um uh-huh. i think it's like two dollars or five or three or something it's super short like it's one of those games where if you want to be a dick you could buy it beat it complete it and refund it easily mm-hmm. in like under 30 minutes <laughs> and uh it was re- it was pretty solid you know for a, for a tiny price point like you do a little bit of fishing. There was some good. It got me. It got me with a little like a little a little thing that happens. And there's some good writing, and the the atmosphere is very solid. Like it does a very good job at like the descent into into madness thing. So it was fun. If you mm-hmm. want to do a completely normal fishing adventure uh, with your with your friends, has some multiple endings. Like it's a uh, it's a good time. Um, I did Iron Lung, which is uh, another super short one. That's also pretty cheap, and you are. I forget what the exact thing is. Like life is, um, like not not like everything's fucking dying, and we don't know why. And the only people left were like in a ring system, you know, like a like an orbital ring or whatever around Earth. So we're like uh-huh. trying to figure out why, and you're at the bottom of a lake or an ocean somewhere on whatever planet, and. The the gimmick is that like you're in the submersible and there's no like window or anything like the way you you have to take pictures and use the map to like figure out where you are. Um, and then there's like horror. You're like it, when you take the pictures, it's like super grainy. It's underwater. So there's some really, really cool shit. Uh, great atmosphere. I thought I would have more warning time they, they, like beeps. You get like a backup beeper if you're getting close to a wall like under the ocean and uh mm. i thought i'd have more lead time i fucking like 30 seconds in i full on destroyed my shit <laughs> full speed ahead <laughs> into a cliff um another great uh, little thing i recommend but it is very very short if that is not what you are into um mm-hmm. moon go moon glow bay I wanted to mention, I don't think it's, like, super amazing. It's kind of like, you're, I mean, you're fishing and cooking and then selling stuff, and there's, like, a nice kind of, like, the start. It's, like, a cozy story. You're, like, helping rebuild the town, and you're doing whatever. It's nice. There's some interesting uh, fish creatures, and I think the story is okay, but it's mostly just a comfy vibe, and you're you're fishing. Uh, the main reason I wanted to mention it is because it got such a fucking bad rap because it released and it had a lot of bugs, uh, including some like game breaking ones, like some soft lock shit, and people mm. were dumping on it. And to the it never it never regained momentum. So if you look on Steam, like a lot of people are still complaining, but they they fix stuff. Like I've been playing on Steam Deck, zero issues. So. I think if anybody looked at that and they were like, oh, this seems cool, but like, shame, it's all broken and garbage. Like, it's not anymore. There's some weird little slowdown things that happen, but it's not a, in a problematic way. Um, What's, what was this one called? Moon Glow one? Bay. It's a, I mean, it came out close enough to Stardew Valley that people were calling it like Fishing Stardew oh, okay. or something. <laughs> sure. Uh, and all of the reviews too, like the 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 
professional ones or whatever were like, man, it's so comfy and cozy. It's a shame. Like, I have to fucking save every two seconds and worry about my game crashing. So they've they fixed it. It's it's nice. I, I had a good time. It's just kind of a nice, chill, slow, whatever game that I will uh-huh. complete someday. But shit came out and I kind of strayed from it. Um, Yeah, it looks like it just never got a lot of reviews so it yeah those early ones kind of yeah it hit, i think if it was like like it doesn't it doesn't have enough to have like a separate category for reason yeah 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 it, it never just i think maybe if it wasn't broken it might have picked up much more because people were hot on like that stardew valley sort of vibe still um that's the thing but I. but there are like a but there are a million of those games coming out all the time now Oh yeah, yeah. This was just this was like an not that it's like Stardew Valley a lot, but everyone was making the, yeah, this the is, vibe connection. This is, it was twenty twenty one. This yeah. game came out. It was I think it was one of the one like the fact that it was all fishing was uh mm-hmm. was a big thing. Cause like yeah, there's a there's well, a there's, billion farming <laughs> clones. Yeah, yeah. There's a recent fishing game, but that one's all Cthulhu horror also yeah dread this dude I would this kind of why I was playing it because I wanted to do the 180 so like uh-huh. whenever I get back to this my next fishing game is going to be dredge 100% because they actually kind of look yeah. and play like the gameplay seems kind of similar but it's a total 180 sure <laughs> so that'll be exciting um yeah and then the last little one I had it's kind of a it, not that it's a bad game Terra Nil um, I've been waiting for it for years. It was shown at, I guess, Devolver Digital. Is that the name of their little showcase thing? That is the name of a showcase, yeah. Okay. They shot off like a trillion Devolver games. So yeah. So I assume it was that one. Um, and I was like, it's so it's the city builder where it's like a reverse city builder. So like nature is all fucked and the environment is terrible. You got to like fix the earth. I'm like, this is this is the shit <laughs> right here. I thought it would be more of like a go, like sort of a, uh, for those who know, like Dorf, Dorf Romantic or um, like Islanders. Love Dorf Romantic. Hmm? Dorf Romantic is fucking, like that's good Dorf shit. Is, is sick. Um, I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I, played the, I played the demo for, for Terra Nil and I did not. I was like, this is not for me. Pretty yeah. Quickly. They, I think the, the full game adds a lot more in a kind of nice way but the thing it's lacking is it doesn't have an it's like a five or six hour experience then you're kind of tapped unless you want to redo stuff or do creative mode or something i was mm-hmm. hoping they would have like the 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 dwarf romantic thing of like you keep getting points but you're in danger of running out of points so if you fuck up you're done like i wanted it to just go and go like an infinite thing and i if that comes sure. out this is like an easy like I could sink a lot of time into this game, but for now, I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm done. I, I did it. <laughs> yeah, Dwarf Romantic is so much more like a puzzle game. Yes, in this, in this, and just like doesn't an actual city builder. Yeah, yeah. And my, th- my big thing with um city builders is like just the this new breed of city builders like uh, are Timberborn and uh, Frostpunk of like it's a city builder, but also there's like external forces putting pressure on you. Yes, yeah. um, is so much more compelling to me. <laughs> yeah, sure. And you know, this is is definitely closer to like the comfy vibe, like <laughs> just a light puzzle thing. Yeah, and I think the I think the vibe is is good. Like it's a it's a fun little game. It's just not the 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 dwarf the environmentalist dwarf romantic that i wanted so bit sure. disappointing yeah, but still i just good. i i thought it was kind of boring yep uh, totally fair totally fair um yeah that's it for my like quick game shit there will be other games but those are a bit more of a a conversation <laughs> instead of a lecture okay, i gotta yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, i've got a uh, a quick one yeah, just yeah. throughout is uh, Bat Boy, which is okay. just uh, a Shovel Knight like. Nice. If you like Let me Shovel see. Knight, Let me it, see. it feels like Shovel Bat Knight. Boy. Kind of. Bat Boy game. 
It's just a 2D platformer, you know. Oh man, linear, this is so. like a yeah. This is the this is the vibe. Yeah, it's just it's just well made and good. Nice. Like it's not. Yeah, this looks this looks like super solid uh, pixel art. Mm -hmm. It looks very visually nice. Yeah, it has does a lot it, of shovel knight feel to it. Does it have a good it's soundtrack? Cool. It looks like the soundtrack is banging. Soundtrack is butt banging. Yeah, <laughs> like it's just it's just well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. Like, it's just incredibly solid. Like this was just a good time. Yeah. How uh, did you beat it? I did. I I finished it. Nice. I, oh, uh, how long roughly? For those interested, it was. Uh, a little under five hours it took me to beat it, though I didn't hundred percent. But okay, I did. I did finish it. I did every level. Nice. So, I want to be. I, I think. It, I think it's topical. If you're, if I want, I'm curious what Astro's Playroom is. I'm seeing that on your pile. I've seen you mention it. I've never heard of it in my life. It's the 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 3D platformer that you comes free with the PS5, basically. Oh, I had no and it's, idea it's, that it was that. <laughs> yeah, the first so the first Astros was a VR game. Okay, it's, it was also just a 3D platformer, but kind of used VR about with like perspective stuff and like looking around, kind of mm -hmm. like the diorama take on. VR kind of thing. Sure. But this is just a standard 3D platformer. Yeah. And it's mostly, and it's, it's kind of short because it's a free. Yeah. Free they're a little like yeah. quotation marks <laughs> with your $500 console. <laughs> um, uh, and it's mostly, it exists as like extreme, like PlayStation nostalgia bait. I see it. You're the, like I going around, like collecting high res, like, pick uh, 3d objects you can look around of like old playstation consoles and controllers and stuff um mm -hmm. yeah so i see like that the in, image here. in playstation specific nostalgia um and it's like a showpiece for the ps5 controller with like the haptics and the the like the speaker in it whatever it's like it's like it's extremely like sony made a nintendo game <laughs> In terms gotcha. of like, here we're That's showing off all this hardware, and this is cute and fun, um, and it's just pretty good. Yeah. I'm not as high on it as some people, but that's because it's a 3D platformer that doesn't have a run button, and I'm a simple uh. man, and a parent, <laughs> and for some whatever re fucking reason, even though all that means is I'm gonna hold the run button down all the time, but never let go. I have way more fun if there's a run button. I sure. don't. I don't have a good explanation for that. I just I've learned this about myself. Like I felt the same way about Super Mario Odyssey. <laughs> it's like this is fine, but I don't love it because they don't have a run button. Uh, the except Super Mario Odyssey though, when you possess a Goomba, you get a run button, which only was like the exception that proved the rule. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, why can't I play this whole game as a Goomba? God. <laughs> you could try. Because that's like, and that's like the big difference to me between like the 3D Mario games and the like Galaxy games. Sure. Because <laughs> in the 3D Mario world and 3D land, uh, you have a run button. Yeah. Even though like there's level design I... differences too. But it's really the run button for me. <laughs> <laughs> the great differentiator. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, oh, like yeah. Astros is fine, it, but it does feel like you're looking into a parallel world where it's so if Sony were Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, that's a, uh, interesting. And it's like the game is extremely dense with like bespoke animations and you know little little details. Okay, uh, so it's it's pretty pretty impressive in that way. Like they clearly put in a lot of work into what is not a terribly long game. It's like five levels that are pretty big that have like four sections each. Gotcha. Oh no, it's it, maybe less than that. I think I'm. It's four levels and then the boss fight. I think might be it. Okay. 
and like some of it is going to depend on like your nostalgia for Sony because like they, they when they play the boot up music for the PS1, how hard does that hit you in the bones? Because that hit me pretty hard in the bones. I, I remember seeing your your comment about that in particular. Yeah, <laughs> so that's like the first. That was the first uh, home Hang console. Up. I want to. I want to. I want to test my bones. Play okay. station one. Startup sound. I feel like it's gonna hit. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good noise. It's a very good noise. Um, it, and it's funny because like I've been actually hearing that noise plenty recently. I've been playing. Actually, I could. I that's another thing I could talk about is just uh, messing around with retro games. Oh, the transition. Uh, See when I when I hear off this, the off the Mister. What the hell is that? Uh, FPGA, it's like hardware emulation where they have ah. it's this this particular type of chip that you can it's reprogrammable, so you can so developers can use it to imitate other chips, like imitate the electron behavior of the of the actual hardware. Um, gotcha. and people you have used this particular one to do it for retro games and like the highest complicated console that has been managed to be reproduced so far is the the PlayStation. Nice. That's so that's like the high end on it. And it's like an open source, big open source project with people making stuff making stuff for it all the time, like working on arcade cores and stuff. Mhm. So it's just and it's just a, it's just an alternate form of emulation where it's hardware emulation instead of fully emulating everything in software. Yeah, yeah. It's just neat. So I've been playing some old PlayStation games and random other stuff like Outrun and Turbo Outrun. <laughs> uh, um, and I played some Armored Core. There's... And I want to play more Armored Core. The... The only game that I really, like, played... On PlayStation, because I didn't have one. My cousins had yeah. one, but I was over at their house like all the time. Um, uh-huh. And they didn't have a lot of multiplayer games for it for some reason. So, uh-huh. like the one we would play would be a uh, Jet Moto. Sure, I was like fucking high on that game. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that, that was a big differentiator between the N sixty four and the PlayStation at the time was the N sixty four you could do four controllers default. Yeah. yeah whereas yeah. the PlayStation you needed a multi tap, which just meant that like less games were made for it. <laughs> yeah. Whereas like ra- random N sixty four games would have four player multiplayer more often. Yeah, totally. Like Donkey Kong sixty four or whatever. Did it have multiplayer for something? Donkey Kong 64? Yeah. Yeah. That four player, like, running around shooting each other, throwing grenades. Oh, oh, that. Okay. I was, for some reason, I was, like, thinking of the campaign. I was like, they have fucking. No. (laughs) Okay. No, like like an arena shooter, but. Yeah, yeah. Donkey Kong. Also, Donkey Kong himself was broken. For some reason, because in the multiplayer, they like they tuned out down all the characters so that they were like kind of all equivalent. Like Lanky's arms didn't actually stretch, give you extra reach in that mode. Sure. But for some reason, Donkey Kong's roll move was faster than everybody else's is what I is how I remember it. <laughs> so he was just fucking better. And yeah, then there was an yeah. unlockable character, Crusha, and Crusha was just better than everyone also. But, like, Donkey Kong was the default funny. character, and he was just weirdly in this... He could just, like, chase down anyone. <laughs> he was just <Yeah>. better. <laughs> um, oh, that's wild. I don't think I ever played that. I own that game, but mm. I don't know that it ever came up. Did you? Could you select yeah. it, or did you have to, like, go there in the hub world or something? I think you selected it from the menu. I don't really okay. remember. It's been a long time. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Because that sounds like something me and my brother would have played. But 
Mm-hmm. Maybe it just never. I mean, it wasn't it great. Came out. There were better options. Well, yeah. I mean, we we're playing. Honestly, we were playing Smash Bros. Like fucking twenty four seven was the, yeah. the one. <laughs> yeah, and sixty four Smash really Bros. Is, is the fucking one. Yeah, man. <laughs> that game rules. Played the shit out of Smash. Yeah. Um. And I've just been going down other weird rabbit holes. Like I've gotten a 360 emulator up and running on my computer because I wanted to play the check out some of the Armored Core games from that era. Gotcha. And then I was watching a an old Digital Foundry video about um uh Daytona USA, an arcade game. <laughs> uh, and it turns out like the best version of that was uh the port for the 360 so playing that emulated is kind of you like you can't even buy it anymore it's delisted um oh but okay. playing it emu- but playing it emulated is like the best way to currently play that game that's pretty <laughs> funny uh, <laughs> so the i did whole that ass thing yeah. yeah and that game is uh i play it on e because also playing the 360 version, you can set the difficulty to easy because the defaults are stupid because it's an arcade game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's meant to take your money. Uh, <laughs> but it has that song. Oh, uh, can you do it? Can you? I, I'm sorry. What song? Could you do a sample? <laughs> I don't think I can. Do the thing. Do the thing. Uh, it's just it a lot of do. do, 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 do yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Or whatever it is, <laughs> but they're literally saying it's not like horns. It's not an instrument. It's literally people saying "do, do, 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 or whatever the whatever the rhythm is. They tone. Uh, they put a they lot of tona. emphasis on that toe. Yeah, yeah. It's a, that was a fucking. That was, I'm like, thanks. I was yeah. working, <laughs> and like the point of the the digital foundry video was like how it was like a video about. The part of like their argument about talk why that game was interesting still to talk about now is this is why frame rate has always mattered because Daytona was like the super early 3D racer that ran at 60 frames per second, whereas a lot of the other early 3D racers did not. Yeah, <laughs> ran at terrible frame rates, and like people, so like people didn't necessarily under have the idea of frame rate as the thing in their head, but like they knew this game is shit and this game rules. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's great. <laughs> that's a hard example. Because like, the, yeah, there's just and then there's there's Cruise in USA, which was made by Midway, which does not have a good frame rate. But that one also that one they 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 keyed in on have the song, the Cruise in USA I, song is just a thing for that is also stuck in my head. But that game is less good to go back to because of the frame rate thing. Yeah, Whereas Daytona. Daytona looks fucking wild for like a '90s 3D arcade. Like the the tech was really was really good on that arcade version. I played. Which is the... just so weird because, like, the like that was that was Sega. I think. I think it was Sega. Um, and their home console hardware was all focused on 2D art. So like the. The Saturn version kind of sucks because <laughs> it wasn't. It was like a whole different kind of system. Yeah. Oh, that's wild. Just interesting, interesting stuff going it's, down. It's, old games. It's funny you mention uh, cruising USA. I played quite a bit of that as well. Cruising, yeah. cruising the world. Cruising, cruising I the world was that's that the was one sequel. That's yeah. the one me and my brother did a shitload of. He said his first swear word at that game. Nice. Or not his yeah. first. Cruising USA, I think, is specifically because, yeah. like, there was, like, a place in Montauk that had a Cruising USA arcade machine that I would play um, when, my par- when I went there with on trips with my family. Did you know that they made, like, no other cruising games until, like, 2018? Or 2017, sorry. There's Cruisin' Blast for Nintendo Switch. Great. <laughs> well, Midway, it was, it was those are Midway games, and Midway, like, barely exists, except they still make Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
I'll say it's a pretty fun game. If you're not, if you keep those expectations pretty low, it's a good yeah. game. Yeah. I grabbed it for the nostalgia. <laughs> yeah, I've been more into like actually playing the old games than playing new shit that's like like the old games. Although that's like that's that's case by case. Like if the if the new like old like version is actually good enough, then it's say that yeah, we've been you we've been playing Street Fighter Six. That's just a new video game. <laughs> um, I mean, that could be our segue to talk about that one for a bit, if you want. Sure. Street Fighter uh, Six rules. I so. It's. I mean, it's probably. It. I feel like it's gonna have a a place in my heart because <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like it's the first fighting game I've played since Soul Calibur Two, sure. and. That was still like, I remember literally going through the Soul Calibur menus, and first off, I was really fucking pissed because they kept using, uh, where, where are my buttons? You know, they're giving me arrows. That's simple. But then, what the what the fuck is the L button? I'm hitting the L button. Nothing's happening. Where's the K button? What the fuck am I looking like? I was getting so upset, and I never like even when I I think at some point I did figure out like punch kick whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But I never, I I like could never get the combos. The funny part was there were some that I could get, but I just couldn't. I couldn't do it well. Like thinking about the combo in my head, it was just mashing buttons until you <laughs> did a thing, and then like I'm just gonna mash those buttons every fucking time. So yeah. like you know the the clip that people love of Link riding Ivy's ass and slapping it with his sword. Like I lived mm. that. But I had no mm. idea how, like on a technical level. Sure. Um, that it, it was a weird, like I know the buttons to press, but I don't, I can't recall them after the fact. Uh, mm. But like uh, in other fighting games I've tried over the years, I just never like actively trying to do the inputs and stuff. It, I think it was still early on, just never, ever took. And then it's like, you know, it's been like eighteen years or whatever. 15 to 18 mm-hmm. years of like, ah, nope, I just can't do fighting games. Whatever. It's too difficult. And I'm like, fuck it. I'll try the demo for Street Fighter 6. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I could have done it this entire time. <laughs> I missed out on, a, <laughs> on an entire genre of games because like eight-year-old me couldn't fucking hit the quarter circle. <laughs> Are you kidding? Uh-huh. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just funny that it, I mean, it, it's good. Like, I'm glad to be here, but man, I... Yeah, I need to get caught up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, speaking of the the original PlayStation, the first game I got for it was Tekken Three, because like partially motivated by there was like an EGM review of it gave it a perfect, like a perfect score in every category. <laughs> oh, okay, it was part of why I was like, oh, this is the game. Uh, and they weren't wrong. That game rules. <laughs> Uh, uh, even going back to it now, the thing that really stands out about that game is like, well, th- specifically, oh, uh, three definitely feels better than two. Uh, weirdly, two only two is available on, P- like, was like ported digitally, to, so you could play it on PS Five. <laughs> so I have booted oh. that up recently. Um, Interesting, but three always felt way better. But the main thing when you go back to that game that's like, oh, this is really fucking good, is the load times are just really fast, which was not even common for PS1 games. Like, there are plenty of disc-based games that take fucking forever to load. Um, Yeah. But it loaded really fast, and it, and, like, Tekken 8 takes forever to load by comparison, but, like, (laughs) like, it's still, like... The thing I look at that game was like this was brilliant, because <laughs> like and like the music would like keep rolling as you were like retrying stuff like nice. It just had a mu- like the flow of like running through the arcade mode was just like extremely. It did not have a lot of like hard edges that make you go out. I'm done with this or whatever or I'm, or I'm bored. <laughs> yeah, um, in a way that like you know a lot of my. I feel like it's a thing modern games don't care about enough. Um, that's like a thing I look at with games and it like stands out so hard when it hits. 
Like, I think that's a, like a key part of old Tony Hawk. Like old Tony Hawk was good. It was like the reloading into a thing, like trying again. And it's like, it's, there are too many things things that like want to be something like that but then fuck that up <laughs> like the load times being too long or whatever yeah, like yeah. A simple simple like i i think it's like a core feature yeah honestly like that was kind of my it's a it's a completely different thing in a way and i recognize that but like that's my deal with um like metroidvanias mm-hmm. i don't mind getting like because I'm bad at them. <laughs> I'm bad at games, yeah. generally. Yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. in Hollow Knight, I'm getting my ass kicked. And I'm like, I don't mind doing the boss again because it felt doable. Like, I just kept fucking it up. Having to go through the entire damn level, taking, like, 15 minutes of my time to traverse, and then I get there. So I'm already annoyed at having to trek back. Like, I know it's not a load time, but, like... The extra waiting, when you're trying to really get a thing, any extra waiting time between that thing is just, like, extra time you're not a- attempting. <laughs> it's more time sure. to be not in the in the moment. Yeah. Sure. I didn't have that problem with that specific game, but... Well, yeah, that's you. just my... That's, that's my specific yeah. bit with the... Yeah. Like, yeah. Super Meat Boy is another example I would point to in saying, like how quick it is from dying to doing the thing again. Very yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Important. Um, How would you... Uh, so you've played a handful of Street And, Fighter like, Street Fighter, Street Fighter 6, I actually think that, like, time to get back into a match is probably too long, but the being able to, like, set your character's facial expression on that load screen, very good. <laughs> <laughs> like makes up for a lot. <laughs> it's yeah, having a little something to look at. Yeah, yeah I never, yeah, I never yeah. felt which like is a, it which is which is a thing Soul Calibur did too, where you could press a button and they would say a thing. Oh hell yeah, Soul Calibur two. I remember. I don't that. even remember that. Yeah, maybe I. I probably did it all the time. Yeah. Um, how does? How does Street Fighter Six compare to like other Street Fighters? I don't know how many you played. I assume it's a, a fair chunk. I mean, it's pretty similar to five and four. Like since okay. they went since they went to the three D style, there's like core bones they're working off of. I would say, gotcha. uh, particularly like compared like five was building on four. This is building on five and stuff. Um, but this is just a much fuller featured game at launch than five was five was kind of a that's what i've heard kind of kind of had fucking nothing in it like you could do online but also the online was kind of fucked up um yeah like this like this online is just way better and it's like uh, it was like unacceptable then for fives online to be bad like rollback netcode existed and was like in the ports of street fighter third strike that was on 360 like yeah like good good online for fighting games was not a fucking mystery. You just had to do the work. Um, when we played, the online felt very good. Like surprisingly yeah, you were at like, good. You were at like two bars, and you live on the other side of the world, but yeah. it felt good. Ping was <laughs> yeah. ping was like hovering around one sixty, one seventy, but like everything felt precise. Like yeah. I did. I do want to check at some point whenever we hop in next. Um, if like some of the <laughs> look, I'm using the touch pads when shit gets sweaty. Literally, I mm-hmm. get worse because the touch pad is sweaty. It starts reading <laughs> inputs where the sweat is because it's hot. <laughs> it gets messy. Uh, it's just a nightmare. But I I couldn't tell if like going back into into trials and stuff, which is what I've been doing. Uh-huh. Like, is it is it that much more precise that I'm ha- just having more success in, in, like, trial shit or character guides? And it's just, like, a timing thing online that I need to get used to being being that far away? Or was it just uh-huh. the, the hardware being being weird? But, like, it it didn't feel like I was fighting the hardware, except uh-huh. for, like, the minor bits. Like, it felt like I was just getting my ass kicked 58 yeah. times by someone who's played <laughs> the game for <laughs> infinitely longer than I have. Yeah. I took him for three I was... rounds. I need it needs to be said. I took Hank for three <laughs> fucking rounds and one of them it was, it was his main. So, get fucked. 
<laughs> yeah, when I was like trying to like only use light kicks or something. <laughs> no, you were going all out. You were no, going there were definitely, all out. There were definitely some rounds where I was like, can I win with just using this one button? The answer was yes. <laughs> well, that one time it was no. <laughs> Oh, round, I guess rounds, <laughs> sure. Like those three yeah, 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 individual yeah. rounds. Yeah, yeah. I think the only one where I was like, I'm gonna punch your face through the screen was when you were just jumping over. You weren't even doing anything. You were just jumping oh, over. Oh, yeah. Me. When I was like, I'm going to get it. I'm going to I'm gonna win on time. <laughs> I just didn't know. I forget who I even was <laughs> that. Because the, the, the other problem that I've been I think you were Jamie. That would make sense. And I'd been, when we played... Um, I'd just been doing Marissa. Like, I was working on her guide trial shit. So, like, yeah. she was the only one in my head. <laughs> and I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm like, oh, I think I think I liked playing Jamie. Like, I'll try him. And I'm like, I have, I don't remember any of this. It was the, that yeah, not, yeah, yeah, that yeah. Like, the difference well. between playing the character you've been playing and, like, playing the character you, like, kind of know when you're, like, up against someone who's, like, at, well, and, even at your skill level or better... Like it's like a whole different thing. Well, and it, it but if we had, you know, if we had done suddenly this right all your, my, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It just I just know that feeling of like all your everything you lack suddenly comes with so much more into focus. You're like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea how to do that. Yeah, and then I learned that like charge characters are just not for me right now. Sure, based on mm-hmm. my setup. Yeah. We're getting close. We're getting close. I'll finally pick a character. I, for reference, I have like eighteen and a half hours in the game, and I've not done anything but trials and uh, mm. the our our little session. <laughs> yeah, taking the taking what I learned from picking a monster hunter weapon and really really applying it liberally to this game. Sure, <laughs> but I'm like I'm also excited like for other. Yeah, I've mostly I've had... been fighting people online. Yeah, that it's makes like sense. comparison point to what I've been doing. I'm fucking nervous because you're you're bronze, right? At least with 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 Chun Li, I think. Yeah, just bronze I think I'm for bronze people. four or like four star or whatever. So I'm like, I'm like on the verge of getting out of bronze to the next level, but I haven't played in a few days. Yeah, um, I had another person offer to do casuals, and it turns out they're like gold and like multiple characters and platinum. <laughs> and a couple. And I'm like. Hank was fucking bronze. Oh no, <laughs> we're gonna learn. <laughs> yeah, and I think in five I only ever got to like it was like super bronze. Yeah, before I, like I quit. I I just quit that game because I didn't like the like the online. Sure. Like I would go to to grab someone at the time they would grab me and like they would always win. I was like, I'm done with this game. <laughs> yeah, that was that was my my Halo Three problem. <laughs> Where's the trade? Like I, Where's the yeah, bounce? Yeah. yeah. I did put like, and then they like, they put like a root kit in that game at some point, and then I uninstalled it. <laughs> it's like, I this game is I, bad, the online is bad, and you put a root kit in it to like, for like yeah, security yeah. protection. Like, fuck you, Capcom. Yeah, tapping out of this one. Um, um, I, I apparently, we, like, that game got better uh, as it existed for a long time, but. They yeah. kind of they really fucked it up at the beginning. Part of the whereas part four of, four was like was like fighting games like like a dearth of like like the genre like new games not existing and it like started a whole new wave of of the genre. It like reinvigorated the whole scene. Gotcha. Like kind of the modern fighting game scene like starts with Street Fighter Four, <laughs> really. Yeah. I mean, one of the one of the things about six isn't even about the game itself, but like I'm also just excited that the genre has opened as as, as something you, that's yeah, doable. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so like I'm looking for like oh, I don't know. I gotta get you into Tekken Eight. <laughs> I mean, it would Tekken, be hard. Baby. Tekken was actually the only other like true fighting game that I had a. a a tiny bit of experience with because my friend mm-hmm. had I want to say a Game Boy version whatever one was on Game Boy Advanced um, yeah that's like that's a port of Tekken 3 I think that sounds right but it, again it's two you have two buttons instead of four yeah yeah um, 
I played the. I mean, I I played it because like I thought that some of the characters were real cool, and I think there was a was there like a little overlap with Soul Calibur two. Like Yoshi. There's Matsu? Yoshimitsu. Yo- Yoshimitsu. Yeah. Yeah. Because I remember that. Because I. Because I like they're both that they're character. both Bandai Namco games. Oh okay okay that makes yeah that makes and sense. hey like hey Hachi was in the PS2 version of Soul Calibur 2. he was the exclusive character and he's like a oh. a main Tekken character. Gotcha. So yeah, I mean like I you know I think I think yeah. I remember like the, Tekken the thing about the, the thing I like about Tekken it was like was like as a game to learn is like every button is tied to a limb. You have yeah. left punch, right punch, left kick, right kick. Those are your buttons. Yeah. <laughs> that just, like, made sense. <laughs> As, like, a thing to learn. Like, these, yeah. Uh-huh. That's clear. As opposed to the heavy, light, medium punch and heavy, light, mm-hmm. medium kick or whatever. Well, and then you got the... the or Soul Calibur, where you have, like... Forward attack, sweeping attack, kick, and yeah, block. I was, yeah, I was... Ugh. Block button. Garbage. Yeah, I mean, I like Soul Calibur, but... I guess... I, prefer, I kind of... Mm. I mean, my my muscle memory prefers the block button. Even against you, I said that one match, I, like, panic triggered to try to do a shield, like, in Smash Bros. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's coming in hot. Put the shield up. I got my ass beat. There is no shield. <laughs> there is no shield. That's true. Where's my orb? Um, <laughs> do you ever do any Mortal Kombat? Like Mortal Kombat One. Great no, name. Mortal Kombat like, is the one I never, I never got into because I never liked the feel of it. Like the, those games always felt stiff to me. And I just never played enough of them as a kid, so I've never or or like had anyone who was super into them to like make me like so I was never into Street Fighter either till I had friends that were so super into it that it was like I have to play you this against them or not sit here or like leave or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. like that's how I learned Street Fighter Three Third Strike was just friends who were super into it, and it was like. <laughs> All right, I guess I'm doing this. Yeah. No choice to, to get my <laughs> face kicked in. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I just and like I just never had a the the Mortal Kombat like experience learning it or whatever. I mean, yeah, it feels like I I understand the driving force. Like I, I'm gonna beat your ass one day. <laughs> We're gonna mm-hmm. we're gonna fire it up, and you're not gonna know what fucking hit you. I'm gonna nail all my inputs. I'm gonna do like frame perfect shit. You're gonna be like, damn, yeah. I picked a bad round to only use light kick. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was kind of the case with Soul Calibur too. Also, was my friends had it, and that's why I played it. Like Tekken was the the fighting games that like spoke to my heart that I desperately wanted to play. For me, were Tekken and. Uh, the Marvel fight, Marvel superheroes, <laughs> because gotcha. it had that fucking makes, Spider-Man in it. Yeah, that, that makes sense. <laughs> I'm, I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm, you know, now that the genre is open, I'm going to find a, a fighting game consisting purely of waifus. And uh, those exist. We'll go from, oh, they exist. <laughs> Skullgirls is pretty good. See, Skullgirls was one I was thinking of as, like, a thing that I could play because I remember vividly buying that game because the aesthetic looked fucking great. Mm-hmm. Um, the music was pretty solid. And then somehow I made it all the way through purchase and into, like, a chunk of the game. And I was like, wait, this is just a pure fighter. And I literally turned it off and uninstalled. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't even, like, being mad. I was just like, this is on me. I should have looked it up. Like, I can't do pure fighters. Whatever. That's funny. Yeah, there is a thing of like what you want as a casual player of a fighting game. Uh, it's not always what fighting games deliver. Also, I'll say. Yeah, I can like, I can see that. Like Tekken Four, I remember being incredibly disappointed with. Like I rented that game, and in the ca- course of renting it, I unlocked all the characters, and then I was like, <laughs> wait. Uh, 
oh, there's like literally nothing left to do in this game. I don't, I don't need to buy this. <laughs> yeah. Even though like, the, the, like I bought a PlayStation One for Tekken Three, and I bought a PS Two for Tekken Tag Tournament. Like extremely big Tekken fan. And not, they also did a change in that game that I hated, which was they like added level geometry, whereas you used to just fight in like an open field that had no ring outs even. Like the, okay. the like background would like rotate around you. It was like you were just like in, gotcha. in, an, in an empty void. Uh, and this added like walls and stuff. But like and like ex- they were like extremely tiny levels too. And you would just like get someone up on the wall and just really fuck them up. <laughs> just like extremely <laughs> they are up on this wall and you were wailing on them. <laughs> Which is like funny but boring <laughs> after a while. Like yeah. made the game gave it less longevity, and they like they kept some of that in Tekken, but like they definitely backed off in making such terrible tiny levels. <laughs> <laughs> there was also just like aesthetic stuff, like because earlier Tekken was like every the games felt like extreme technical showpieces, and by the time Tekken Four came out, that kind of they kind of felt like just another video game. Tekken yeah. 5, though, Tekken 5 ruled. And also Tekken 5 had Tekken 3's arcade mode just in it as, like, an extra thing you could do. And oh, that would nice. just, like, made me happy. It was like, yes, it's everything I love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, the other big thing that impressed me, uh, big thing for me at, in my stage of life is that Street Fighter Six runs at 60 FPS with, like, a mix of settings on Steam Deck. Mm-hmm. That shit's inc- yeah, like yeah. I'm very surprised, but I, that's because I'm used to being disappointed. <laughs> Terra, like yeah. Terra Nil. I mean, running like at running at sixty is like extremely important for a fighting game. So, oh yeah, you have yeah, to work yeah. really hard to make I mean, those games optimized. The only thing is like uh, the the world tour doesn't. Yeah, 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 but like I think that's just kind of for most people or many people. Like, that's, yeah, that's I think like on consoles, and, there's there's ones yeah. That, yeah, the world tour so, mode doesn't run at sixty. I'm like, I'm not worried like, about the, that. The Xbox C- Series S in particular, I think. Oh yeah, levels. that makes that but, makes sense. Yeah, I, but yeah, I'm looking, know, the world the world tour mode is just asking more of the y- yeah, the game. yeah, yeah. And it's still like, like it runs. People. If you lock it at like thirty, it runs. It it will stay at thirty. I think it could maybe do yeah, yeah, yeah. like forty, but it dips. Sure. Um, but I'm looking forward. The, to the, the other thing I'll say, world tour mode, kind of boring. That makes sense. Apparently, the alternate and, costumes are linked to it, which is kind of disappointing because I don't really care about that mode. <laughs> but much. alternate costumes, though. I know. I'm like, I'm gonna do it. I can't say no to a fucking <laughs> alt costume. Um, but hey, you can yeah. buy the alt costumes. Do I value my time or my money? Uh, exactly. Exactly. I value my money right time now. is money friend um and hey i'm getting younger uh the other thing is like i love street fighter i think they're great at character designs they're like stories for individual characters and like endings at the end of cutscenes have always been terrible yeah <laughs> that shit's always been bad particularly compared where i'm coming from with i love tekken where tekken like the it's it's character ending cutscenes that were tremendous the, the 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 best ones are fucking hilarious they're great nice is so that I the one you like, showed me like, like the dinosaur or whatever yes yeah 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 yeah. that shit was pretty good <laughs> like there's just like there's a sense I of mean, humor to it i mean there's look, like a lot of they just always I, I didn't even i had to look it up i didn't even know like tekken 8 is like the one that's not even out yet yeah, yeah, it's that's the the one that's coming out I, next year. For some reason, I thought it was already out. I mean, They've I haven't been, been paying a attention. Of character trailers. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Um, no, I could probably be talked into it. I figure by then I'll be able to kick your ass. So, yeah, learn it. I mean, I'm even more, I'm worse at Tekken than I am at Street Fighter. It's oh, we've got a chance. <laughs> Take you for that's five for rounds, sure. and that's for sure. Oh. 120 yeah that shit's uh that shit's very good it was very fun um 
I, it's making me want to because the genre is open to me and now i'm like a kid in a candy mm. store i'm like look at all these fucking games that are years and years old and all on sale <laughs> that i could get yeah, for cheap all, now. Yeah, also also one of my favorite things to do on on mister with those retro games is like boot up old fighting games and just go through arcade modes <laughs> hell yeah um it, it, i mean it makes me want to try a stick I don't really, I sure. like. I don't really want to try any. Of the, like, I know there's the hitbox like stickless thing. I don't really care about that because I want like the arcade stick feel. Like, I I did my share of shit. I I probably even played like yeah. a fighting game or four on arcade machines mm-hmm. just because they were in the restaurant that we were in. I can't well, remember are, which ones they'd be, but six are fun. It's like a novel controller experience for sure. Yeah. If I when I I've just played on pads so much more. If I want to be good, I'm I'm. I should just use pad. I'm just better at it. I yeah. just know. See, but I got the. the I, no- got the I have. Push. I have a fight stick that I like. Replace the buttons on to get good arcade buttons or whatever. Um, see, I think I'm gonna. It's fun. It's I'm fun. Get I want to mess with it. I'm gonna sure. get a little cheap, like the cheapest one I could find, which is apparently still like quite expensive. Which I guess makes a little bit of sense. I'm just glad that like it's the like public conversation around that, like the understanding of the community has now like become reasonable to where like, you don't have to play on a stick to be good. That was never true. It's just the people who were sickos who like played in their arcades played on sticks. That's what they knew. Yeah. Um. Once like now that like on good online exists in fighting games, like plenty of people have gotten like to be the best in, in fighting games playing on a fucking PS4 controller or whatever they just had. Like, yeah. There's well, something I've... about the arcade stick that makes you better. It's just is this the way you've learned to play or whatever? more than anything? I'm hoping someone makes an optimal hitboxes actually maybe give you an advantage cuz you can be more precise with yeah, yeah. button tabs. Um someone just had the loudest chair screech. Uh <laughs> It was not me. Um what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, I hope someone makes a better like profile for the Steam Deck for like the touchpads. Because mm. I really I think it's a matter of like dead zones and stuff. And also, like if you don't got sweaty hands like I do, um, like even before, like when the demo was only out, like some people were like, there might be something here. Like this is the best form that uh, this is like the best input method I've felt uh, aside from like a stick or whatever the hell they were using. And I'm like, mm. that bodes well, but, like, you know, I'm not that person. Yeah. So There are people who also think playing on a keyboard is the best way to play a fighting game. I saw people a lot of that. Weird. I saw a lot. Well, because they <laughs> like, set it up like a hitbox, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And I'm like, that And, sounds... like, I understand. I'm just like, not me. Look, I can't be someone me. even... Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm almost talking myself out of even bothering with an arcade stick. As someone... Because uh, Binding of Isaac, right? You're uh, yeah. moving with WASD and you're shooting with the arrow keys. That mm-hmm. was fucking hell on my wrists. Hold it, but you're mm-hmm. also holding those buttons. I think tapping would be better, but that is something mm-hmm. I'm like hyper. Like I've gotten to the point. I'm like if I can use a controller and the experience isn't worse because of it, I'm using the fucking controller. Like yeah. look at Halo. And Halo's uh, great because like the controller is arguably as good, if not better, or was until recently. If you look at like the pro, like what are the pros using? What are their like hit ratios and shit? What's their accuracy? Like controller was at the top for all, but like a tiny percentage of them. <laughs> uh huh. So, yeah, a comfort. Yeah, I need to be I good. Like I, like, I like playing a shooter with a keyboard and mouse because that's what I feel yeah. more comfortable with. And yeah. Like better. It's just I mean, personal I mean, personal preference is a big look. part of it. Like what you've done, like I it's just. The time it would take to learn the new control scheme is like, <laughs> is that worth it to me? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I like playing playing Halo Three and stuff. Like controllers, just that that muscle yeah. memory comes back so hard. But your results with a mouse on a striker or the skewer, <laughs> sorry, the skewer, <laughs> the skewer are uh, uh, hard to fucking argue. <laughs> One hangs out here going fucking four for four or whatever. <laughs> Barrel stuffing people with it. I can't no scope skewers. The actual the actual play is to have the Xbox controller, and then as soon as you get a skewer, quick switch to mouse keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Um, do you want to talk about a game we love or about a game we probably disagree a bit on? Um, let's let's have a disagreement. We just had a love fest for six. All right, for fuck Fighter. you. Hell yeah. We're talking about Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. The latest and greatest from Nintendo. Um, Breath of, Breath of the Wild too. More Breath of the Wild. I now with building. I have such a it's I, mostly positive emotions, but some of those are also like st- uh, stemming from a point of smugness, because <laughs> everybody was out here giving Breath of the Wild ten, and we were both like neither. I was not super high on Breath of the Wild. We've had this conversation, I think, in our 2017 Game of the Year discussion. Like uh-huh. that game is fine. It's good. The vibe is immaculate. The music is super solid. There's a lot of great shit going on, but like, meh, like seven out of ten, maybe six. Um, I think, and now people are like, it was a ten out of ten, but it got better. I'm like, it wasn't a ten out of ten. <laughs> like there was maybe I mean, it was a lot of room what, to improve. <laughs> there was a lot of room to improve, but you know. I just think if that's your favorite game you ever played, then I guess it's a 10 out of 10 for you. I don't know. I, I'm one of those, I, I, I mean, I'm, it's a bit of double think. I'm the first person to be like 10 out of 10, but also like, I, I say that as a quick way. I, I'm very binary. I either like the thing or I don't kind of <laughs> is how I usually think about games. Like if I don't yeah, like yeah, this, yeah. I'm not playing it. If I like it, yeah. I'm, thumbs up, thumbs down. But sure. I think it's if it's a 10, you're not allowed to say it's a 10, but, you know, if you're giving this thing a perfect uh, score, I think it has to be perfect. I don't as perfect think as it can be. You should take scores shit. that seriously. Yeah, but here's the thing. I was right <laughs> and they were wrong. <laughs> I'm not I don't I don't care that much. But the, the reason the reason why I bring it up, um, aside from the smugness is that now like we're we're doing the same thing I feel like cuz people Tears of the Kingdom came out and people are like holy shit Breath of the Wild actually had room to be improved this is a 10 out of 10 I'm like you guys say that until the next one has Still this shit but better and it has some quality of life features <laughs> Like what if it ran at 60 frames per second <laughs> What if it ran at 60 frames a second and like you could batch cook you know <laughs> Like what if your weapons didn't fucking break in the same way although they did like it does feel a little better as someone who bitched about that with breath of the wild but like they just they like throw materials at you for good weapons at just a much high, at a higher rate yeah and it, it, yeah one, so then it it's makes like it kind of whatever yeah um yeah that is not, just, like that like, weapon degradation it still exists it's just not really a problem this time it's and like I uh i think especially with the materials being how you do like arrows and stuff like i have so yeah. many arrows without trying um but yeah i when you I run out of arrows it can be it can be pretty annoying but i don't for again, me again they're they're they just there's a lot more resources in the world it oh, feels like oh yeah and it feels like for me the world is more full not that there's necessarily like they didn't do the dungeons i think the shrines are a bit better but like that's still the system they're using um yeah. but i think there it feels like there's more to do like i'm getting distracted by shit and finding more shit and it's not just koroks <laughs> it's great mm. but i like i don't i don't think this is a 10 out of 10 by any means and th- as someone who really you know middle on middling on breath of the wild i think it's a drastic improvement like this has hooked me like breath of the wild kind of didn't sure um, I mean, I didn't beat it. <laughs> like, I started playing Street Fighter and other stuff. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it, it's good. Yeah, I kind of played enough to to like see the arc of like, what are my actual core complaints about Breath of the Wild? They're still here. What were um, your core complaints? Out of curiosity, what are those? Which has to do with like the distance between doing a thing. I just think is too long. Like talking about the loading time thing, like just running from thing to thing yeah. because it's this big open world. I just, 
I feel like that just takes too long for me. Is so I'm curious because I actually watched a little thing that someone uh, recreated about like their design philosophy for exactly that in uh, mm-hmm. in Breath of the Wild. Are you the type of person to like you you hit the main thing, or are you gonna like or or whatever you're doing, you're just gonna go do that, or are you like, ooh, there's a thing over there, I'm gonna go check that out, and then you're like 18 digressions deep from your original goal. I'm mostly gonna do the thing I'm gonna do. Yeah. And I think I think or I can switch mode to say I'm gonna do side stuff or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, my like my real mode is like mostly do the thing I want to do, and then if something is is like, but like the convenience of like if it's if there's a side quest on the way, I will do that. Um, yeah, and I think I feel like this game and and Breath of the Wild are set up for. More so this game it are set up for people who are like allowing themselves to get more sidetracked, I think. Because, yeah, if you're, well, if you're so going my directly, other yeah. my other problem is I still feel like whatever you're doing to explore the outcomes there, there aren't they aren't that varied. It's a Korok seed. It's a shrine. There's some other little things, but yeah. There's but nothing like there's... Com- specifically compared to Elden Ring, where yeah. it felt like there were th- like there were so many different things that I would get out of doing stuff. Like it that felt so much more rewarding to look around and do all the things, even though I didn't do everything. Um, I did, you know, I I did the side stuff that as I felt compelled to do it and then mainlined to the extent that I wanted to finish the game also. Um, that just lined up way better with my brain. Like the, the, like the actual progression of making your character better, like in so many different ways or whatever, um, mm-hmm. whether it's collecting souls or getting items or whatever, like just the limited number of ways you improve your character and how it's, it's, like it's just it's just another shrine it's just another shrine you're getting to and like i will just mainline mainline to shrine to shrine or whatever um i like saw that arc and i'm just like um i i i just think i'll have more fun spending my time elsewhere because it's also such a long game (laughs) yeah yeah it's i mean like to really feel like i got uh, like i've like if I'm gonna like play it to beat it, like that's just such a time sink, and like just doesn't the amount of t- fun I'm having per minute is not worth it to me, and that's like a weird way to look at a game, but that's that's how I felt about it. Cause, because yeah. also like I don't love the I fuck well specifically I fucking hate the English voice acting. <laughs> like I yeah, really no, don't a, like it. That was a mistake. No, that's um, first, so that, that, first that kind of that, that, that kind of sapped some of the story. Like I, I switched the language to Japanese, which is just what I needed to do, and I could enjoy the story that way. Um, yeah. but it does, like, I don't know. There's some level of hype off the story, which is like I think there's really cool bits there, but it's just not quite enough for me, and like I'm not. You know, it's Nintendo. I'm not like out here <laughs> thinking they're gonna pull something that's really cool out of their head. I don't know. <laughs> Even though there's like there's stuff in there that's fine, but yeah, I think I think compared to Breath of the Wild, the the non shrine Korok seed. I mean, the Korok seed stuff is fine. I think they varied that a little bit more, but I didn't do much of it in Breath of the Wild because like there's 900 of the fucking things. I can't be asked. I hate. I that know, it's just so much like inventory. you find a unique feature in the world. Oh, I wonder what this is. It's a Korok seed. It's always a fucking Korok seed. Yeah. <laughs> or there's a shrine hidden under behind a wall or something. I definitely stumbled upon more kind of like cave like i remember the, like the first thing i did in elden ring was find a random cave and then you go all the way down there's one of those like cat statues or whatever and yeah. it like blew my fucking mind because it was just a random cave near the beginning of the game mm-hmm. and, and i think it's a big thing for me is like exploring f- for the sake of like exploring i yeah. don't enjoy like i that 
is not fun for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I like I like doing things that have purpose or whatever. I need yeah. like a little more direction. Like the the again, Elden Ring was like it really hit the sweet spot for me for that that kind of thing. I think the for a I think big the, open world game like this and enough stuff to do. I think the environments and the the type of areas that you're finding because like there's more caves and shit, which is which I like. I, I I'm perfectly happy doing like a yeah. Skyrim dive or whatever. Um, there was even I even had like a Black Reach moment or yeah, uh, Black Black Reach Black Bleak bear, the the giant one with the glowing mushrooms that you always fall into. Every cave leaves there or whatever leads there. Um, mm-hmm. I kind of had that moment. I was like, "How deep is this fucking? Where, where am I going? Where is the end to this?" And it turned out it was like a cave system, like into near the castle or whatever. It was mm-hmm. fucking wild. I spent like an hour there and I still wasn't done. And I like that was really cool. Um, and that, but that was kind of like I I don't think it was supposed to have like an end. But the stuff I kind of agree. Like the stuff that has an end, there's cool caves. I think they're well designed. There's like this other shit going on that's really cool. But like you get to the end and it's like meh. Or because I did some stuff yeah. out of sequence, or I was doing more of like the um, the Sky Island stuff. Like ooh, I found a I found a shield that's really good. If I had found it like three hours ago. <laughs> But now I'm, I'm sure. stacked, yeah. and it's all better. and like you know the 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 thing that like I'm never gonna find the sick new weapon that's gonna be the thing is just also never gonna happen because any weapon I get that's cool is gonna break eventually. So none of that really matters. That's all ephemeral. Like like that that really that sucks that whole part of yeah. that oh, out totally. of it for me. Where like this like in this game it feels fine. But also, it doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, finding like I um, still it's, remember it's 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 mush. And like the other third pillar, the third pillar of thing oh, okay. I don't yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. The other major one is, I kind of fucking hate the. I don't like the combat, uh, in the in these games. So like finding a a thing to fight, is also yeah. not that fun for me, because <laughs> I think sure. the combat kind of blows, especially compared to and like Elden Ring, the combat extremely fun. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, can see I really, that. I, re- I really like that combat. Like fighting things is engaging and fun, and like a puzzle to solve in itself. Um, and I just don't f- feel that way about Zelda combat. So that's like a whole yeah extra thing definitely... of like where I'm not having that much fun. It's like it's f- the combat is fine, but when you're li- when I have to lean on it, it's like I would rather be doing something else. Well, and I think it's more of the like. I I don't know I don't know the best way to describe it, but it feels like it's kind of in the same vein of like exploring for exploration's sake. Like the combat is interesting if you're willing to like build the crazy shit and do the thing. Like you can make it so fun, but like if you just want to straight fight a thing, like yeah, it's just you know. And I'm definitely like I'm not the type of person to go ham on the com on the building. Like I'll build, I'll do some dumb shit, but like I'm not out here making the wild contraptions that people are making to like wreck shit or do silly things i'm like eh, it's fine I'll, I'll do a vehicle whatever but yeah and it kind of i think it was kind of the same in breath of the wild except you had less tools like oh man I'm, how am i gonna approach this i'm like i'm gonna approach it by like walking up and hitting shit and then shooting an arrow when i have to i can throw this <laughs> shitty bomb or this square shitty bomb hey the bombs were cool <laughs> No, the fact bomb flowers being back, ten out of ten changed. Like giant <laughs> explosions, like your bombs oh actually God. do shit Dude, in this game. First, it's such a I good a, change. I literally killed myself the first time I <laughs> yeah, threw a bomb because yeah, yeah. I was not expecting. It. They are not. <laughs> you are like in like Breath of the Wild. You're using like child safety bombs. <laughs> yeah, they got those uh, Gundam school this is regulations. Safe. This on. is safe for kindergartners. <laughs> Uh, you have to be 21 years old to use these bombs. <laughs> yeah, no, they're they're beefy. <laughs> you have to show your ID. Uh, I mean, the also 10 out of 10 thing that they added was the new enemy type called Horoblin. <laughs> <laughs> just okay. We're just yeah. doing it. No, your your tool set is much better in this game. Tutorial Island also sucks, oh, though. The tutorial is so fucking long. 
Which is which is honestly, I didn't play that much past that tutorial island. So if you're if I'm like this game isn't fun, maybe part of it is that. But uh, yeah, it's just it's just a linear path. It's like so much like. But you did the cool thing. You're, you you did the thing in Breath of the Wild that everyone's like, this is a great way to open this game where you're just in the world. And you did the exact opposite. I feel like... Great. I mean, they, I get why they did it. Because they're they, like, they A, this is, this is a sequel. So they kind of know people. They don't have to like sell people on the idea that like there's a big open world where you can do anything. The thing they have to tell people is like these are your new specific tool sets that have that are weird and more bespoke and specific and like a much cooler set of tools, but we need to just get you to have all these so that we can build the rest of the world assuming you have all of this. Like I get I think they why it happens. They overcorrected, in my opinion. <laughs> sure. Like, it didn't need to be that much. It was, well, not even, like, I don't think you needed to tie one to each shrine. I don't know. It just it just felt like a lot. But that's the only way you can convey anything in this, in this game is a shrine. <laughs> that's Dude, true. I'll, I'll like, say. they're not selling you, like, a false message about what the game is. <laughs> I'll say the, um... Speaking of shrines, the I like the shrines better than in Breath of the Wild, but a big thing that's really hitting for me that doesn't matter at all for most people probably is the little the little music shit that goes off when you complete the shrine as you're like talking to the statue. That shit's very good. <laughs> I I let it play each time in Breath of the Wild. I skipped yeah. it because I wanted to stab people. Another thing that I think was better in Breath of the Wild is they gave you your hang glider right away. It was very weird. You have, to, I, you have yeah. to go to the city to get your hang glider. The first thing I did, fun story, the first thing I did off getting off Tutorial Island was running to a shrine. It, what I kind of knew was the wrong direction, but, you know, it's a big open world. I want to go do a thing because it's there. Um, and I couldn't finish that shrine without dying because I didn't have the hang glider. Like, I could do the puzzle... But then, like, you get shot back across the level, and it just killed me because I didn't have enough health it's to live or incredible. the hang glider to glide. <laughs> um, That's great. And there was, like, yeah. a another... There was, like, a chest right next to it that also, the easy way to get out of it, just auto-killed me because it was, like, a <laughs> spring, and it just shot me up in the air, and I fell to the ground and died. <laughs> yeah. No, they definitely, even after the tutorial area, they definitely have, like, some kind of railroady shit, it seems like. Um, I mean, it let me even, go over there. <laughs> and even, Well, yeah, like, not, okay, not, like, for, like actual railroad, I guess, but, like, yeah, they have all these. No, but big, the world, they set up the world is designed signs. assuming you have all the, all the tools. But they all don't. All the tools, but, like, even for, like. Which way to go? Everyone's like, wow, a lot of stuff going on by that Rito village. Oh, man, all those bird yeah. people. Like, oh, the side quest by the Rito village. Like, they really are suggesting this stuff. And then there there were yeah. some other instances where I'm like, okay. It's kind of like, getting... it is like kind of, the, that's uh, part of the overcorrection of like, well, we'll give the player more direction. It's like, this is not the right direction in the right way. Whatever, but. Yeah. Game is fine. It's better than Breath of the Wild for me. I I was expect I yeah. I went in with expectations. No, I look at low. I look at it and I'm like I get why people love this. Um, I think like the, there's a lot that's really cool about it. Like your your tool set is nuts. Oh, and, it's so good. And dope. It's so cool. Um, it's just not for me. Yeah. As like because of baseline things about the game. Mm -hmm. In the same way, in the same way that Breath of the Wild wasn't for me. Like it just at yeah. At, at the bones of it, it was kind of the same problem. Yeah. And see, for me, the, the added stuff was enough to, like, I will finish this game at some point without, like, forcing myself to over Breath of the Wild. And I was fully not expecting to, to feel that way. I was like, this is, I think this is going to have the exact same issues for me. And it, it fixed enough of them for me. So that's good. But, no, if, like, someone was like, nope, this is still garbage, which you... 
I mean, not garbage, maybe, but like, yeah, that was meh. I get it. I could, I can see the flaws. I'm not giving it a ten out of ten. I'd give it like an extra yeah. if I uh, g- uh, gun to my head. I'd give it like an extra point and a half or something. I'd give it like an eight point five or eight, maybe <laughs> something like that. Uh huh. Maybe a nine on a really good day if I'm feeling <laughs> feeling saucy. But it's sort of like it's nowhere. It's nowhere near a ten. Sure. And that's, yeah, yeah. I'm it's not, just like I, I'm not that excited to get to the next boss fight because I don't think it's going to be that fun. And I want to be, me. I want to be clear. I'm not the type of person who's like, oh, they ruined the Zelda formula. Is dead. Like that. That was Zelda. I think I felt that way a little bit when Breath of the Wild came out, but I've matured since then. And I'm like, this is fine. But they need to integrate some. They need to do something better with it for the open world shit. If that's what they're gonna do. Also, I hope they don't stop making like a like a sort of link between well, worlds kind of deal. I have a bigger problem with Nintendo in general, which is that they've <laughs> they've basically stopped making the kinds of games that they would make on like the 3DS. Like yeah, they oh, merged totally, their yeah. businesses, but they basically just stopped making handheld scale games. Yeah. Um I guess you could argue that the last, that like remake of Link, but it's a uh, remake. <laughs> it doesn't even fucking yeah. count. Yeah, they just like they're not making new games that fill that, that at that scale, <laughs> at that yeah, forty dollar yeah. price point, <laughs> that are like pretty good and like le- a little less full ambition that would like work really well on the Switch. Yeah. Um. Because it's a handheld, like make handheld games, god damn it. And like I just miss <laughs> that yeah. kind of output. No, that's not good. Yeah, oh same. No, that's so. definitely a void that has been sitting there. So like yes, um, I would I, I'm dying for a link but another game like Link Between Worlds. That's my favorite Zelda game. But like even in general overall, just like criticism of Nintendo, I want more games that would like fit in that mold. Yeah. Um you know what game did fill a void? Mechabell? Mechabell filled a void, dude. I had an I had an auto battler void. And it's been filled. See, I didn't even know Mechabellum. I had Mechabellum. Mechabellum fucking rules. I've been playing so much super auto pets, I was like, I'm set on auto battlers. <laughs> uh-huh. Fucking Me- Mechabellum hits. I'm like, oh, maybe I wasn't set on auto battlers. <laughs> maybe I was settling a little. <laughs> no, there's there two, two different... Like- Two different things. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. An auto battler that also, like, you have to put, is like, you're constantly learning or whatever. Like, there's there's just so much to it. You don't, you're, you haven't solved it. Yeah. I mean, I haven't solved super auto pets. It's all about the pivot. <laughs> this game or not. Sure. I mean, and that's kind of the thing, right? Um like with that, I I, I I can't think of another super uh, super auto battler of an auto battler <laughs> that's that's like auto pets where I don't play the versus mode. I play their arena mode that takes snapshots of teams. So I'm playing against myself more than anything. It's sure. like, can I recognize this time to pivot? Can I recognize the best thing to be spending my money on? All that shit. And mm. in Mechabellum, well, Mechabellum is the opposite in that it's. One v one, yeah, <laughs> or two v two, and the fact that it's it, the fact that it's like that, um, I really, really like also over something like Storybook Brawl or uh, Hearthstone Battlegrounds, uh-huh. because for those, I think to be, you, I don't know, just the amount of people that you're dealing with, and you're still kind of playing yourself, but like you also have to pay attention to what other people are doing. You know, so you don't get, like, picked out of a tribe or whatever. And just, like, how to counter their shit, like, if you need a poison. But Mm -hmm. here, because it's so direct, it's just very, you know, you're trying to get ahead of your opponent. You're trying, you're countering the shit that they just did. And you're thinking about where they're going to take their step. And it's great. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're different things. Like, like, like Battlegrounds and, uh, those are, like, they're elements of, like, drafting a deck. 
yeah, that, are, yeah. that you're like, it's different brain muscles or whatever you're using. Sure. But the hard edges of, of a one-on-one fight where if you fuck up, oh, you just, you just oh, feel can, it. You just get, get like, smashed into the dirt, <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> Yeah, because when you you when you when you nail your opponent, you get to do the same thing to them. I yeah. love those those hard edges of like really destroying someone or and, getting totally owned in like this experience that's really fast and it isn't like it's it's pretty testing quick, my dexterity. Yeah. yeah. Oh, to- the, as soon as yeah, I mean I've said a couple of times now off air like it said RTS without the micro and I was fucking in, dude. Yeah, because I do not have the the brain for that shit. Doesn't like it. Yeah, or um, like you know, that shit's. It, sometimes you want to play a game that just doesn't test that part of yourself. You just yeah yeah want yeah. something. Sometimes you just want something different, which is like the auto battler hole, <laughs> which is like um, you know a good a good contrast to playing Street Fighter Six. <laughs> Oh, dude, I, it was so funny to me while I was, like, playing both of the, like, I've been playing them, all, like, alternating, and I'm like, this is yeah. wildly different <laughs> things to be yeah. learning. Uh-huh. Um, I really, I, I really like how Mechabellum does, I, I don't know what to, I don't know what to call it, their reward system? I don't know, like, if I get my ass handed to me in a round... I know that it's not going to be, like, a complete snowball, right? Like, sometimes sure. at a certain point, you're like, okay, this dude is just fucking rocking me. But it's not because mm-hmm. he's constantly... It's not because he's snowballing. It's because he's just making the right decisions. And, the like, because you don't get to realign your entire field every time, his right decisions mm-hmm. just stick. And your shit ones stick. <laughs> so you need to try to shore that up. But yeah. it's not like it's not like you're out because he's snowballing because he won the first two rounds. Yeah, like you both have this the like approximately same amount of resources every round. Mm-hmm. Like obviously difference because some abilities you roll randomly will give you more resources or whatever. But yeah. but like you're still like every turn you're kind of working on the same platform. It's like you but you know you bet a hey, yeah we're right bad decisions stack up like plays in which you've countered that's that like if 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 his placement is countered your placement (laughs) that stays that's a problem you have to solve well he can go do something else to get further ahead oh yeah or he can then counterplay you like all those kinds of decisions are there and but like and like small positions can make a huge difference in certain uh aspects yeah there's like if your if your units are attacking the wrong thing, sometimes they just get fucking wrecked by a thing that they would normally be able to beat. There was one. <clears throat> I've been watching. I've been watching a few videos because uh, that's what I do when I play new games. Sure. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Although I've been watching any. Fighter, I like watched. I watched just enough. Dane Hine trying it for the first time to go. Oh, this is incredible! I need to buy this and play this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Close this video. I mean. <laughs> For for Street Fighter, it's been like, please help. <laughs> sure, <laughs> but uh, for for Mecha Bellum, there was like there was someone just I. I think I typed. What was I looking for? I was looking for something specific, and some someone came up because of uh, they it was it was related but not like helpful. It was just the thing that they did during the the match that they uploaded. Uh-huh. And I was watching their videos, and then I got linked to a guy who. Um, I forget his username. He he had like him going through tournaments. So he had like tournament two, match one through seven or whatever as separate sure. videos. I was like watching his stuff and that was that was pretty helpful to get an idea of things. But there was definitely one one round where he was like, Why the fuck did we both just had like teams of crawlers going at each other with no interference? Why did mine lose? And it was because he placed them like vertically. Instead of horizontally, so, like, all of the wave of uh-huh. enemies just, like, ate the, the stick of chocolate yep. coming at him. <laughs> yeah. Like, there was another one. He's like, why did this target weird? And it's because he had it literally a block. He, he wondered why the, the sides weren't equal because, uh-huh. you know, they both went symmetric. 
And he's like, why is this side losing? It's like, because you literally placed one single unit of whatever, like a square over from the other side. <laughs> so uh-huh. it lost. And it's just, yep. it, that shit's wild. Yeah. It's super no, good. Those, those hard, hard angles are, are so good. Cause, and that's the thing that makes, um, like I've been, I've also just been watching, I was watching a lot of, uh, Starcraft one. And like mm-hmm. that's the thing that makes that game so good is the hard edges of like the difference between units compared to two where like the AI pathing is also good that everything kind of just becomes a death ball. <laughs> Whereas in one like units get in each other's way like it's so much harder for like the person playing to control everything <laughs> that that's like part of the game is just the how hard it is to do anything, yeah. <laughs> which is like you know, kind of a less fun thing to learn (laughs) or play now. If like you, you don't have that built in, but to watch it's way more interesting to me Mm -hmm. in particular. I mean, it was funny that, uh, that heroes of the storm has been doing their tournament stuff with like actual Mm -hmm. commentators and everything, because watching some of the mecha bell and stuff, I'm like, man, because because the way I like to watch games, it should be prefaced, is um, I like to watch games that I'm also playing because I know what's going yeah. on and then I can also like take anything I see and like apply it and blah, blah, blah. Like, uh-huh. I'm not out here watching Isaac videos anymore because I haven't played Isaac in forever. I'm watching Super sure. Auto Pet videos because I play that game fucking every time I sit down. Uh-huh. So I was like, man, what if we had like commentated like Mechabellum <laughs> like tournaments? That'd be cool. Uh-huh. Just because, you know, it adds that certain something that's nice. Maybe one day. Maybe someday. Maybe I'll be the one to come. Maybe I'll start commenting on him. Acting like I know what I'm talking about. Hell yeah. That's all it's all about. Confidence. Yeah, man. Ooh. ooh, (laughs) My favorite. (laughs) That was on the hots today. Like one of the announcers like, I may be gold, but. (laughs) (laughs) Man. No, it's it, it just has that certain and it, uh we haven't talked about it, but Mecha Bellum is like fucking stupidly polished for being early access. Like the amount of shit yes. in it. Like not even just like, oh, like they have a lot of battle options and units and stuff, but like they have a spectator mode. They have you can create rooms easily. Um inviting people and joining them is pretty simple once you find the button. And like mm-hmm. the camera options are crazy and, and fun. Yeah. Like they have like, the the tech there's, stuff. There's one v one. There's two v two that you can friend with. There's a survival mode where it's like the enemy stuff changes every turn. Like yeah, and it's like stuff. The the interface makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, it's it's crockable extremely quickly, which is like yes. that was not true of original auto chess <laughs> <laughs> at all. Um. And for like this to be like a kind of new thing, and that all that shit to just all be pretty clear. There's like a little bit of thing of like knowing that you can click on your towers for for ability. Shit. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, like you cut. You do kind of need to go through the tutorial just to like know all the things. Yeah. Um, because there are a lot of different places where there are buttons, but like compared to some early access games, like. They polish this in the right places extremely well. Yeah. And like, there's like some they, UI that feels a little placeholder, but, like, it's all f- very functional, and and it feels like... I don't feel like I'm playing a game that needs needs a lot of work. I feel like I'm playing a game where, like, the bones are extremely good, and if they can yeah. build on this, they could get... It could be even better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, I, it, it seems like they... Yeah, like you said, they're just polishing in the right place. Like, I saw a thing. I was trying to figure out um, if there was anything we were missing with 2v2. Because it's kind of, the way it is now, it's kind of just a, it's sep- it's side-by-side 1v1. And then the winner of each match, like, their units will then fight each other, crossing yeah, the, over the like, battlefield. Like, the only thing that's not that is, like, your units can get, like... The flank shit gets pulled weird. over. Yeah, the flanking yeah. in the middle, you can get like your units can get like pulled into the other fight, which is super. That if you know, if that's like that's the like closest mind. thing to attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
So that's very interesting. But I think at some point, like I saw before this existed in the game, apparently, when I was trying to look up shit about it, I stumbled onto a thread and someone was like, idea, 2v2. But they described it as more like the kind of what you'd expect, like two-headed giant sort of deal, like one yeah. big field, uh-huh. um, which I would prefer. That would be much cooler. And I think it would be cool to have both. It would be cool to, yeah, like, fuck it, yeah. Which is, right, which is the in. thing... The, the thing that I want is, like, more. Don't, like, try to rebalance stuff and take stuff that's in the game now out. Because, well, like, that's how, you, that's how you can fuck it up. I, like, just want alternate ways to play, I guess. I'll be, Like, you don't want to split the player base too much, I guess. I don't know. I think the only, the only reason why they would probably, or maybe not the only, but the main reason why they would completely redo only have the like giant battlefield version Mm -hmm. is if that's like kind of what they wanted to do but they couldn't quite yet or they couldn't get it feeling right Mm -hmm. so this is like a placeholder that would make sense yeah i know they said the roadmap has a four-player free-for-all oh hell yeah which is like yeah baby (laughs) that's sicko shit i'm down holy shit yeah man like that's (laughs) i want that so bad um (laughs) But yeah, this like, one wasp get, went the distance. Oh my god! One wasp against three players crawlers. That uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's there's just so much in it, and it like you mentioned um, when we were talking about it, just in chat and stuff like. Mm-hmm. There's plenty there to keep it interesting. I, can't, I still can't believe that one YouTube comment I told you about where the dude was like, I wish this had less units and that you could control them during the battle. <laughs> like, why are you <laughs> fucking here? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. It's, it's not your game. You got plenty of that shit. I don't know. Like, there, there aren't a ton of new RTSs, but yeah. I mean, I assume there's not a ton that have, like, a very low unit count. And then, like, giving basic instructions and not having to worry about, like, resources, building, all no, that shit. Yeah, yeah. But still, that guy can fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> what a dumb <laughs> comment. <laughs> yeah. I, I recommend Mechabellum. Yeah, it's like 15 bucks US. Unless you're in a third world country, in which case it's $6 US. Sure. Boom. Yeah, I think even like this, I, I think at 20 it would even be like solid for me. Yeah. Like it's a very good game. If you are if you like it, you fucking love it, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And if you're not into it, you're not into it. No, um, like I've been playing yeah. less magic recently because I've been playing this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it's getting a little a little late on my end. But uh, I do have two quick things that I could mention. Okay. Um, super easy. Uh, the book series I started a while back because only the first one or two were out. Eh, it was two because I read about the second one on NPR. Uh, Gideon the Ninth, uh, the Locked Tomb series, which I was talking up, you know, muscular girl skull paint. I was like, the writing was just hitting for me. Um, the author, which probably nobody remembers, w- cut her teeth on Homestuck fan fiction, and boy oh boy did she like start getting into that bullshit. So I like that was an unfortunate <laughs> flop <laughs> as a series for me. <laughs> um, she started writing the it was a planned trilogy. She started writing the third book, put like twelve hundred pages into just writing like one character's shit, and mm-hmm. her publisher was like, "This can't. This isn't even like." half the story you were supposed to tell with this so she put it in another book and i'm like your expanding scope has turned me off even though it's not terrible yet but i don't trust you anymore sure. and some other story stuff like it, it seems like it's getting complex for complexity's sake kind of like homestuck was like mm-hmm. oh boy this is so wild and deep such a such a complex thing has to be good it's like it really doesn't um, so that's a whiff. I still really like the first book. I think the first book is great, and you can just use your imagination from there. Um, 
And then I read his secret illuminations and his secret incantations, which I probably have mentioned before. They are the romance uh. adventure novels that I thought were going to be smut. Uh, instead, it turned in, out to be like a really nice adventure romance story that was just nice. You know, like they get to the 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 out of the fish. It has fish out of water shit, which we all know I love. And mm. when he gets into the world, like it's the world is nice. Um, not all of it. It's not like it's all puppies and and daisies and shit. But like part of his the shtick is like he was raised in a basically a cult Christian cult taking the place of some real life versions of things and being told that the outside world is like a fucking nightmare and that everybody's evil and blah 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 and he gets out there and he's like actually people are pretty nice <laughs> like if you're not a dick like it's fine and it's just very uh you know got a lot of diversity stuff that felt well done and not just like di diversity for diversity's sake um, uh -huh. painted a colorful picture of of everything and, uh, I mean, like, yeah, there was a little, like, it got a little steamy, and that stuff was also pretty good. Uh, spoiler alert for anyone who, who wants to read it, the, you, you've been warned, the emotional apex is uh, the main character getting pegged, so that was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> was not expecting, but it was well done. I did, uh -huh. you know, his emotional, coming to terms with his trauma, and also, like, realizing his new self but also he's taking it up the ass so that was yeah <laughs> sure <laughs> just a good time a, a, a nice time so fair enough i recommend if you're into romance and or adventure novels or whatever it's a good time not for you no, don't read them Hank. <laughs> i know you're thinking to yourself what if? yeah no but don't i'm definitely not going to <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah that's all that's that's all i got for this all right, okay well i've been playing a shitload of diablo 4 that makes sense i i've finished the story mode i've oh damn completed the, the capstone dungeon to unlock world tier three that was kind of the last thing i did uh i game it's just good like it's yeah, extremely I mean, addictive the the like the dopamine mainline level of like <laughs> do the quests, get the yeah. loot, get the oh, levels, man. get stronger. Extremely good. I mean, um, getting looting levels. That's a, uh, that's a yeah, It's just like a big open space. You just run around in, uh, there's like just something everywhere to, to kill. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. get and feed off of the, the one thing I would say is like, the game expects you to mainline the story a little faster than even I did. And I was doing it oh, faster than the people I was playing with. So you, you kind of hit a point where I was like, oh, I have to mainline the story to finish it, to be able to unlock <laughs> World Tier 3 and make the game and like start getting open, loot open again. Stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah Like okay. I was kind of plateaued on the loot I was getting where most of it just wasn't, like, actually improving my character at all. And also, like, you hit, like, kind of a plateau on experience. Like, mm -hmm. basically, World Tiers 1 and 2, which are the ones that are open to you at front, I just played on 2 the whole time, um, that's, like, listed as being for level 1 to 50. And I was, like, closing in. I, like, I got to level 50 before I finished the story, even, like, <laughs> mainlining from where I was. Yeah. Um, but that game's just fucking sick, and like it, it's like we gets fucked up and like, it like every I I love the world of Diablo because it's so committed to this world fucking sucks. Everything is terrible. <laughs> like if yeah. something ends ends in like the uh, nothing horrible happened to like the person you're helping, that's a win. <laughs> that's like victory. Um, and it's just there's something about it that's just very funny because it's so committed to that <laughs> yeah um it's and like even when you're like defeating evil it's never about like really defeating evil for forever it's always about like holding off evil for like some amount of time 
<laughs> Everything is temporary because the, these these demons always come back. I uh, it's one of the I I definitely would like to get it. I don't mm-hmm. know if I can run it. <laughs> you pr- Maybe. I'm looking it up. I well at the it's, end there. I was, it's I actually was extremely well optimized. I think it runs I, on pretty dude, low I'm end seeing, stuff. I'm seeing people saying they're on like a a, a Surface Pro eight i seven sixteen gigabyte with I Intel. I think it runs Iris on XE. Steam Deck pretty good. I think I've heard people say it runs on Steam Deck pretty good. If you go through the hoops that, to get it on Steam Deck, yeah. See, that's my problem. I I don't want to go through the hoops. I'm not at that point yet. I just want the pick up and play, but. It looks yeah. like it can run on my laptop, possibly. This person was using... I'm, I'm more worried about the graphics than anything. And this person has the same internal stuff because it's on a Surface Pro. And their resolution mm-hmm. is like double mine. And they said yeah. settings high, FPS 60. So, like, maybe I could actually fucking get it and play. That would be sick. Because, like, I like that. I like that gameplay. I like the loop. It feels good. I've yeah. just never... I've never timed it right because like Diablo three, I never got into, and like I don't even know when did that Diablo three come out roughly. Did I even know you people then? <laughs> Was I, I aware of you? So. Yeah, so like that didn't Maybe. happen. Other stuff. Diablo three like, is just Im- oh, pretty old, and Diablo three like at launch was terrible. It wasn't really it, until the expansion yeah. when it got okay. Yeah, like reading stuff about it, you know. <clears throat> um, so like yeah, maybe, yeah, it was a maybe, mess. Maybe I maybe I dip. Not like I'm playing. Not like I got Tears of the Kingdom Street Fighter. Like this is just a, this is a video game you buy and then you get to play it. <laughs> yep, like compared yep. to Diablo Immortal, which is you know Dia- oh, they Immortal, they also like, made the the free to play yeah. version. Yeah, where like, like I, and see that like I know Paul got really into that, but like that one is like the I just can't handle the free to play. Oh no! Like no. mobileness that, of it, and see, it was the gameplay was hitting, like it was scratching that little itch in my brain. But like in the yeah. back of my head, I'm like, I know this is pointless because <laughs> fucking free to play and scummy bullshit. Yeah. No, man, but like oh the man, the, that's the, the polish on on four is real good. Yeah, maybe I'll um, maybe I'll do it up. Shit! What like, <laughs> what region the is cut the cutscenes are account? fucking. Are fucking sick. <laughs> there might be some fun shit going. I, my battle net account might still be considered in Russia, which would be mm. an, an issue to say the least. True. I'll look into it. But yeah. Oh, that'd be that's that's dope. I honestly thought it was a lost cause for for my laptop. No, but like this is like you know the thing that that used to make Blizzard games. Like one of their yeah, claims yeah, to fame yeah. was that their games would run on fucking anything, yeah. um, and this is kind of like at least a, finally a game in, which has been a while <laughs> that we're like they made one that it seems like this just runs on stuff, yeah, <clears throat> and you can play it with a controller or a <laughs> or a mouse Hell and keyboard, yeah. and it Hell supports yeah. both no matter what platform you're on. Whereas like three. Only the console versions had the controller stuff. Like, it was kind of a different control scheme, so you couldn't oh. play with controller on PC. Gotcha. Um, whereas oh, this one, it just, you shit. just plug, you have a controller plugged in, you can just pick it up and it works. Nice. Oh, um, I think, like, in option. three, like, the controllers, they just gave you, like, a dodge roll button that you just didn't have on PC. <laughs> I mean, sounds nice. You could just roll I'm everywhere. Fr- yeah. Fucking good. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I, I've heard the like end game is kind of whatever in this, but they, that's fixable. And like it's I mean, just yeah, been incredibly you, fun. At that point. Fun so far, or just yeah. and not even like it's not even about fun. It's like this is like feeds. Like it just oh, I just enjoy doing this, and I'm just like plow. I'll just sit here forever <laughs> and do this. It's like hell yeah. If you have shit to do. It's it could be dangerous because it's <laughs> it definitely has the like. I could just keep doing stuff. Although yeah. when I when I when I burned through the the story mode by the end, when I was then like, oh yeah, I'll, and I'll also do the cast division, I was like, I should have stopped. <laughs> I should take <taken> a break. <laughs> I actually played played too much of this at once. My knees hurt. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> gamer life. I noticed my seat was like too low. Jesus. Like I need to... <laughs> yeah. Um, I do <clears throat> gotta, uh, I do gotta run like pretty pretty quick. Oh, this went oh, longer than I thought. We had a lot to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so I've been playing Gladiator. In Magic oh yeah, Gathering. oh yeah, I did see that. Yeah, we did some Gladiator. I beat you. Yeah, yeah, you did. I, you with suboptimal uh, slivers. Hell yeah. Uh, that's a very fun format. That's a fun format, and part of actually what I really like about it is that it's not really officially supported by Watsi yet. It's all kind of home run. On yeah. a Discord server, and that's kind of made it more fun, like getting into a community and like matchmaking by like saying LFG in like a chat room, and then somebody yeah, is yeah, saying yeah. hell yeah, like there's it's been and like participating in like weekly tournament events that are like free to enter and like no prize and like minimal prizes or whatever, but just like for fun, yeah. and everyone's just you know doing it for fun. Uh, it's just been sick, honestly. Yeah, and no, like, that... I, I started it like in the middle of a, a season and now they're like reworking their whole structure format for that stuff. Yeah. The structure for that stuff going forward. But so, and it's kind of in a, in a break period right now, but gotcha. I don't know. That shit's, that shit's fun and it's, it's cool to participate in. And it's like the opposite. It's the opposite of where I used to be where I was like, I just need it to be on an auto queue and that's it. But, like, I've played enough of the way the auto queue system in Arena works, in which I just feel like it mirror matches you to, like, the way it weights oh my stuff. God, the just match. puts you in games that are, like, not as interesting. And, like, yeah. getting out of that and just pairing with, like, the random person who happens to be ready to play has just been much more fun. <laughs> I've yeah, just had dude. more fun. Oh, that and sometimes right. you can't find a game because it's like the middle of the night and nobody's currently around or whatever. But yeah, usually the, oh, there's there's good. a bunch of people in there. I mean, I, yeah, cool. I I'm not at the point where I want to actually play with randos, but uh, yeah. like that the format itself very. Uh, I mean, it's too, yeah. <laughs> it's too, it's too good. There's too much. Yeah, overwhelms yeah. me. But and it's just like, that, like tribal stuff also is like you can do the tribal thing you want with like from commander. Like, let's say I want to do merfolk. Right. And yeah. I don't have to like not worrying about it lets me be as restrictive as I want. But then I can do like the little splash for something mm-hmm. like it was just a, it was a very good time. And it was cool knowing <laughs> for me because when we played, I remember being like. I'm building like I would build a commander deck, and my commander decks are kind of ass. Like, uh-huh. all flavor, no pop. And the 1v1, like, knowing what you're getting into, like, we're, we're playing to win. <laughs> we're not playing yeah. to do, like, the thing. We're not doing, like, there's not four people targeting you, and it's not, like, about the commander. Like, you're just, you need to do the thing. So mm-hmm. that was really cool. Yeah, and there's just like a nut, like a part of it why I think this, like I remember when this format first came up. I think maybe even you told me about it, like mentioned it or something. But uh, somebody yeah, definitely did, I and I was like, I'm not, I don't care, probably. I'm not interested. But Singleton, that's boring. That's like less interesting than <laughs> Brawl. But now there's like enough. They like re- since they they started that for the format. There's been so much released on Arena. There's, like, so much high-powered shit that it's the format became much more interesting to me just because of, like, the card pool is so much deeper than it was then. Um, Like, if I tried to get into this when it started, I think I would have been kind of bored uh, quickly. Sure. But there's just so many more cards. There are so many, like, more good cards that are, like, and, like, good lands I, on Arena I don't... now. I don't think it was me because I did a little search for Gladiator and you are the first person to mention it that I, in my sphere of things, past okay. like the fact that it was the arena event for, huh. for whatever point. But I uh, thought it was someone in our, the Magic Channel, but whatever. Um, it might have been. It, there was a, because the channel got reworked and then reworked again. So maybe it was like yeah. before that. 
mm-hmm. happened. But, but I feel like yeah. it was mentioned to me, and I was like immediately dismissive. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. Like that's yeah. my memory of of that, but that's uh, uh that always reminds me of a former friend who I told when everybody literally everybody was playing Overwatch when it released. I was like, "Are you playing yeah. this?" She's like, "No, like it looks like shit." I'm like, "Just give it a try." And she put like four thousand hours in that game. <laughs> yeah, took a bite. <laughs> friend told me about thing garbage. I saw streamers doing thing. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is the thing. I have to get into this. This looks so cool. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> hop on. Yeah. That's kind of been my that's been my it's actually gotten me weirdly playing um more brawl on arena because like I just tweak the deck I built and like put a oh. brawl commander if if I just want to like press the button and Q. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like oh, not funny. think about it. <laughs> like it did actually get me playing more historic brawl because I was like well I could just like make this a commander and then just press the play button. And that also just works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I can still play with these 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 same cards. So that's cool. Like, I also mm-hmm. think Historic Brawl's gotten better for those same reasons. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it just has the problem of certain commanders make it really boring because they're, like, so game warping and having access to them all the time is, like, yeah. Yeah. And as someone, like... If, if you want to play, kill Ragavan eight times, I think <laughs> Historic Brawls can be for you. Yeah, and for me, it's just not... Watching like, someone like, pay 11 mana to cast Ragavan. And that format is just, in Arena, just not for me. Like, as soon as I get the commander there, I'm like, I need the flavor. Like, this has to be a dumb deck. And sometimes sure. it works out, but, like, people no, get like, sweaty uh, fast. Uh, yeah, the key to friggin' commander is the multiplayer thing about it. It's not having a commander. Having a commander yeah, is a dumb way yeah. to make you know multiplayer yeah. more thematic and fun or whatever. Um, for co- for like one on one dumb shit, I do kind of. I have come around to just thinking singleton's better because you have just more variety of what can happen. Yes. Oh, totally. Like so I love singleton and this like gladiator. Thinking about that, like that's it's a good addition to the the shit I like for magic. Yeah. Where there was a while where I was like, I just want a command. I just want to play with the commander or whatever. Like the <laughs> yeah, ball thing, yeah. like like fiending for it, and then you get it, and you're like, well, this is actually not good. Singleton was actually better, <laughs> but part of it was just you need more cards. You just you needed a deeper that's, card. Pool. Yeah, that's that's also very Which true. arena originally like it had a much less deep card pool than it has now. And the cool thing about having a deep card pool is now new cards come out, and most of them don't matter. <laughs> Yeah, for yeah. playing these older formats, like I don't have to care that much about a new standard really set, which is like, oh, I'm back in my element. Mm-hmm. These standard really sets, like maybe there are a couple cards here that matter, but uh, otherwise, I can kind of ignore this. Yeah, Thank you. so it's Thank you. it's fine that it's bad. It was, so uh, you're telling me I, not I, to I talk about go. the I movies go. I had on this I list know. that I watched like six months ago. Okay. Oh, I thought you were just stalling until we hit two hours even. No. I still have things on this list <laughs> no, I never talked Jesus. about, but the things that are you left on this list you. are the movies that I watched six months ago that I yeah, put on the no, salt pile can... that we never did a salt pile on. Yeah, no, we can we can skip those for now, I think. I hope. Skip those I, for I, now. I demand. Yeah, we'll come back to them in another five. <laughs> keep them on the burner. Keep them on the list. No. Those that'll are be getting funny. deleted. No, I've never no, no, talked no. to that'll you about be funny. this. It'll be funny as hell. <sighs> but yeah, I do have to... I, I also have to, to bail. have Dark Souls on here, which I also haven't played we in, a, in a while. We, mentioned, we fucking mentioned Elden Ring. <laughs> Get out of oh, here. Yeah. <laughs> Dark Souls is different than Elden Ring. Nope. I played original Dark Souls. because, And it like turns out it's good. I need to play more of it. Nice. That's about it. <laughs> yeah. Um 
Capra Demon's the room he's in is fucking horseshit. Everybody knows this. I'll take it's your too word small. For it. He's I'll in t- a tiny gotta, room. Gotta, There's like a goat man with two dogs in the tiny room. The room yeah. is the boss. It's too small. <laughs> the uh, room is the boss. Soul Circle, Soul Circle Podcast, gmail.com, Soul Circle Pod on Twitter. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Comic Panels. Peace. I'm not. Peace. <laughs>